Sonic villains. Love them, hate them, utterly despise them. You piece of shit as low with your piece of shit game and your piece of shit backstory. There's a large gallery of them. No longer are there times where Sonic's troubles all revolved around one egg-shaped doctor with a fetish for enslaving animals. With the dawn of the new millennium and the start of modern Sonic, or the adventure era to most, came a new line of no good evildoers, each with their own quirks, traits, themes, highlights, <sighs> disappointments. Oh, 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 my body! My body is up! And the list goes on. With Sonic Frontiers, after what feels like an eternity, finally releasing, please be good, please be good, please be good, and the story for that game, well, taking itself a lot more seriously than the, I would say Saturday morning levels of cartoon writing that we've been getting for the last 10 years, but that would be wildly offensive to said Saturday morning cartoons. Ooh, that was cool, pun entirely intended. Oh my god. Yeah, all of that. I put my faith and trust in Ian Flynn due to his amazing work that he's done for the Sonic comics, but for now, I figured why not go back and take a look at most of our past villains that we've received and see how well they hold up now. Or don't. Probs the latter rather than the former, but let me not jump the gun and instead say, Hey everyone, I am Blue Stride and welcome back to another video. As said before, we are going to take a look at the majority of the Sonic villains from Sonic Adventure onwards, mostly focusing on the ones that appear in the mainline games with a few prominent ones from some spin-offs. Just a note before we start is that I won't be including Dr. Eggman as he is such a big topic, almost as if he's been around since the very first game or something like that, and would easily require his own separate dedicated video which I will probably make sometime in the future. I don't know, let's not make any promises now. I am very bad at time management. But if you do want to watch a video where I talk about a Sonic villain, look no further than my infinite video. Ow! Did you guys feel that? The edge! And, well, you can see the thumbnail. I just... Woo! I love them. Anyways, no infinite either. Thank God. Listen, I feel like you're overeating just a little bit about me. In actuality, I'm well written and much- GET OUT! GET OUT! GET THE HELL OUT OF HERE! As is with the case of any characters that initially started off as enemies to Sonic, but would eventually join his side and become one of the heroes, much to the actual villain's dismay. Meaning no Knuckles, no Shadow, no Silver- It's no use! It's no use! It's no use! No Ruse and no Blaze. Once upon a time, Sonic had a large line of rivals to duke it out with. Nowadays, his relationship to them are more so along the lines of And finally, no Sonic Frontiers. I haven't played it yet, so that should tell you as to why. Yo, this shit f***ing SUCKS! But before we get into this, make sure to hit that subscribe button as well as a notification bell and become a fellow Strider. I'm still a relatively small up and coming Sonic tuber focusing on all things Sonic slash Sega and any support would be greatly appreciated. Come on you big drip, where you going? You know nothing fool, it's Chaos, the god of destruction. Oh no. Something's happened to the Master Emerald! Oh, it's a monster! No! All he needs is seven emeralds to become invincible. Then he will turn Station Square into rubble. Give me my friend back! I'm begging you, please! Ah! Oh, he transformed again! If he gets that last Chaos Emerald, we're done for. Please don't do this! I beg you! Father! This is terrible! Chaos is... Retreat! All personnel, fall back! I had no idea how bad this would turn out. Help! Sonic! Chaos. Man, what a hell of a start. We've had other villains besides Eggman before, like Metal Sonic, but even still, most of the threat and scale they imposed 
Eggman included would come from their transformations or the new invention that Eggman would have you go up against. But nothing on the scale of this. And by this, I mean a literal god of f***ing destruction. It's like going from Dr. Jiro from Dragon Ball to Beerus. That analogy works a bit too well thinking about it now. True, he's not much for words, except for that one time when he went I felt that. But he need not be. Sometimes silence says more than words ever could. And Chaos didn't need any to feel like a serious danger if we didn't stop him from transforming only becoming more and more dangerous and powerful as he did so. Once again, pulling from Dragon Ball, I swear I'm not doing this on purpose, it's just that these two properties have way too many similarities. He makes adventure very much like that of the Freezer Saga, where our goal is to find all 7 Chaos Emeralds before a vengeful entity does and becomes Nymea unstoppable. Also, points towards Chaos for making each Chaos Emerald gain feel important. Like the tips really scale one way or the other depending on how many we have as opposed to our opposition. That means his two to our one and that's not good. Come on Sonic, we need to get busy! One minute, 37 seconds later. Come on now! Come on! You can do it Sonic! That's what I'm talking about! Shit. I feel like a hedgehog should be stopping me! Sonic! Are you there? Because prior to Adventure, if you didn't have all seven, they were just a bunch of pity rocks. Let's just be real here. It's worthless. Forget about it. Chaos was mysterious, with his backstory given to you gradually instead of a villain monologuing his entire character arc to you, or given out entirely in just one cutscene. Now granted, the way it was segregated with you jumping between different time points into cause memories slash visions across multiple characters, especially these two, I mean, you're dead and you... <laughs> mm, smells like froggies around somewhere. Was a bit messy and probably not the smoothest way to lay out this villain story, but it sufficed. And it was satisfying to see that it wasn't a, hey, I'm evil, you're not. I got a problem with that, let's Ooh, fight now, what? kind of situation. Speaking of satisfaction... <laughs> literal world level threat in this Run! It's Godzilla! It looks like Godzilla, but due to international copyright laws, it's not. Still, we should run like it is Godzilla! Though it isn't. Now that is a final form, and the final fight with Supersonic vs Chaos with Open Your Heart playing it in the background, mwah, perfection. And then in the second half they play a less hype as hell song. But whatever. Either way, while not perfect, as his importance in the overall plot really depended on which character you were playing as, and that some of his forms really lack any hard impact till you reach the final one, Chaos was an amazing one and done villain that succeeded in doing what he needed to do, got his happy ending after eons of being filled with vengeance, and wasn't brought back. I'm gonna tell him. You dare. Minus generations on which he looked even more awesome, as this was what his design was supposed to originally be like, but due to hardware and technical limitations, couldn't. He wasn't brought back because he didn't need to be. Yep, did not return in the slightest in any way that would insult his character. And that's exactly what I'm going to keep on telling myself. Anyways, I would give him an A rank, but seeing as this is the first major villain in a Sonic game since Eggman, not really including Metal as 1. He's really an extension of Eggman's inventions and 2. He's entirely based around a pre-existing character and the major leap from him to this Aww. 
I'm gonna have to give Chaos a fat ass win for being Sonic's first and arguably best kaiju. Speaking of kaijus, hi, how are you? Yeah, Bio Lizard gets a <laughs> out of 10 for me. I mean, what else do you want me to say about it? I mean, he provided a really cool final boss with Goku and Vegeta. Oh my god. Sonic and Shadow, I mean. Corporate needs you to find the differences between this picture and this picture. They're the same picture. But he sort of shows up completely out of nowhere. And yes, before you type in the comments, pushing up your glasses. Well, actually, Blue Shrine. I know he appears in the monitor in the background in an earlier cutscene. But if I have to play I Spy with my little eye to see any sort of foreshadowing, and that's really stretching it, for an image in the background of just one cutscene, yeah, no, shut up, he comes completely out of nowhere, and he really doesn't do anything in the plot either, and there's really not much to him to boot, other than the fact he served as the prototype slash predecessor to the shadow we all love today. How do you go from this to that? I have no f***ing idea. But hey, sometimes freak accidents just happen, kind of like Shadow's actual game. You've gotta be kidding me, guys. This is like taking candy from a baby, which is fine by me. He doesn't do anything particularly bad as a written character, but doesn't do anything great either. You remember more about playing as Super Sonic and Super Shadow over the kick-ass live and learn theme than you do over the actual Bio Lizard as a character. As such, I'm sticking him right in the middle with a C rank. Made for a cool final boss, but he's just a poor man's chaos. Ho 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 ho! Uh, this one's personal. Why? Oh, I have no idea. Anyways, F rank. So moving on, let me tell you why Black Doom is one of the best villains in all of fiction. Brother, this guy stinks! Okay, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Just look at your face. Did you really think I was gonna do our boy dirty? Oh, you look so stupid right now. Now, I'm going to tackle this by only looking at metal in terms of Sonic Heroes. As this version of metal, while still the same metal as other metals, is a very different metal to said metal, and hence should be considered as its own metal due to the differences in writing between the game's metal. Got all that? First off, let me just say, brilliant. Take a beloved adversary and readapt them in a new way. I mean, that is just such an ingenious idea of how to utilize a well-established Sonic character. Okay, maybe not always. Your shoddy craftsmanship brings shame on all hedgehog kind. And for that, you shall perish. But here, it worked. What was once a silent character, unless you happen to speak, <coughs> is now given a full-on personality with dialogue. A clear ambition and individuality outside of just being another Eggman invention. While he was the most important one, still another Eggman invention nonetheless. That wants to accomplish something for himself, even if it meant betraying his father-in-law. Of robotics. Rule 1 and 2, by the way. And his voice lines. See me as I am. No longer afraid of anything. Ah. Oh. Killing. And this design, I adore. Kind of went a bit overboard with Metal Madness and Metal Overlord, especially with the transformation. Got a good 4-5 to five hours of sleep doing that. In fact, let's watch it right now. Hey, you, you still there? Good. Just wanted to make sure you were still tuned in. Didn't want you to miss this thingy going into that other thingy. It's very important to the plot, trust me.
so like, how's your day been? Have you played Sonic Frontiers yet? Cool, cool. Let me just say your hair looks great today. Have you subscribed? You should subscribe. No? You're not gonna? <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. Anyway, but back to the transformation, okay? Huh? Oh, shit. oh, yeah, saving the world. Uh huh, yeah, yep, mm -hmm. got it. Let's do this. Having Metal want to show the world and Sonic that he is the ultimate life form and that he is the true version of Sonic, with him defining such a thing by who is the Sonic that is still standing as the strongest, as after all. Hawkins back to his roots, and while a very simple premise is one I mess with heavily. Maybe that's just the bias in me riding that metal dick, but this is the most imposing that metal has been up to this point, has been since that point, and hopefully not the most imposing he will ever be, as he definitely, definitely hasn't been in recent games. Look on a mask of my boy. Cold, straightforward, and calculated as the entirety of the plot is essentially all of the characters falling right into metal schemes and plans, using a fake Eggman to collect all of the battle data needed to become Metal Overlord, he is a one man, or in this case, one robot, fighting machine. He runs this show. Not Eggman, not some villain that shows up out of left field with layers upon layers of well-integrated foreshadowing, and no villain really does this past heroes. Usually, Eggman plays a vital part, even if he is not the big bad, usually helping the actual big bad, if there is one, get to their ultimate state, even though they almost always gaslight the f out of him in the end, and yet he keeps trying with that tactic. Dr. Eggman, ladies and gentlemen, IQ 300, big body, small head, robotics, genius, but brain, where? Oh no! Anyway, last week... You can take the real Eggman out of the plot and it would really not make a difference, which goes to show how good of a villain Metal Sonic is, or Neo Metal Sonic. He doesn't need to rely on any characters to prop him up. Hell, just to stop him, we need Amy, Ruse, Vector, Espio, Big. I wonder if we can win if we try really hard. Seriously, who keeps inviting this guy to these fate of the world battles? What's your shtick? I have to find Froggy. You're in. Tails, Knuckles, Cream, Charmy, Shadow, Omega, Eggman, and Supersonic all working together. Why couldn't they do this in Generations? Don't give in, Sonic! I know you can do this, Sonic! So, do you guys like wanna help? Or no? Okay. Could this mean that Neo Metal Sonic is the strongest final boss since it took the majority of the major cast in the game franchise to stop him? Don't know, but it's a pretty damn impressive accomplishment nonetheless. I do wish he was in the story a bit more than just mostly being in the last story, and his ending is rather abrupt, ending off with a you. Where's your power of friendship again? And there you go! And then just leave him be. The f they are, Mega Man? Hey! Cut that shit out! Okay, bye, T! Couple that with the excessiveness of the final two transformations. And I'm gonna give Neo an A rank. Even the ultimate life form can't stop me. Shadow the Hedgehog. Why does that name haunt me? It's the only thing I can remember. And that gruesome image. Now, come, Shadow. Now let me tell you why Black Doom is one of the best villains in all- Okay, yeah, I'm not doing that again. Let me tell you why Black Doom is one of the most whatever villains in all of fiction. 
I mean, he's got some cool lines, and I do like his general design, actually very much so. But maybe this is just because of the sourness of the actual game itself. I've caused so much destruction. I should never have been created. This is who I am. Hey, don't go there! Yet! But I can't take this guy seriously. I mean, everything about him just reeks of edge. That's hot. But hey, he's not the only one in the club. He's a key character in the plot and yet does nothing at all. Rather, he mostly just leaves it to Shadow and the rest of the hive mind army he controls, the Black Arms, to do his bidding. I mean, powerful leader, respect to that. But if you're just back on your non-existent ass, actually, I don't know. Black Doom, you got our only arms? I want to see you pull up the robes. That's hot. For 90% of the game, and just order people around and make yourself sound menacing without you actually doing anything directly menacing yourself, I'm not going to feel the real Doom that your name tries to portray. Also, your name is both Black and Doom. Could you have a more edgier name than that? <laughs> I swear if Sonic Frontiers' final boss is named Dark Death or Wicked Ruin, toss in the fact that his integration to Shadow's backstory feels very tacked on, I mean, it works in the general continuity of things for the most part, correct me if otherwise, but it nevertheless feels as if it was just subbed in to give him more of a sense of relevance even though he really doesn't change much of anything at the end of the day. Who are you and how do you know I'm Shadow? You can call me Daddy! Oh sweet Maria, no. Plus Shadow's whole driving force that gets him to interact with this character is him wanting to know more about his past. After suffering from that plot convenient amnesia during the events of Heroes, could easily be solved with literally playing a game of 20 questions with any of these characters and your involvement is once again something that feels like it was just slapped in there. He's definitely not one of the most memorable villains. I mean, Sega somehow gives more love to Mephilus than they do to Black Doom. It should have been me, not him! It's not fair! And for good reason. Not the worst of the bunts, as I like the whole Earth is pitiful due to its history of sin towards each other and the planet itself hence why it serves as the target of his invasion, but wanting to eat humanity and the fact that most of his actions reek of hypocrisy, this relatively cool philosophy on a surface level is as deep as a puddle, or black puddle because edge. Ow! Overall, I'm giving him a C rank. Got some cool lines, cool designs, being a threat that imposes upon the plot, but looking anything beyond that leaves much to be desired. Coming off at the end as just feeling like an unnecessary character. This is the end of you, and the end to my cursed past. Okay, who's next on the Eggman next? Haha! <laughs> no one is a match for me! So, Eggman is a bit of a hard one to judge. Because who even is this character? I don't know. It feels like the games he appears in don't know, and I don't think Sega knows either. Either that or they can't be bothered to create a coherent synopsis on the dude. A 3000 year into the future descendant of Dr. Eggman, except for when he's feeling quirky and wants to be from an alternate dimension instead. Why does Sega keep doing this with these characters? Eggman is just another version of Eggman, usually thrown in to make it so that the heroes have two times the amount of egginess to deal with. Granted, the plot of the games he's appeared in is mostly being spin-off titles, which aren't exactly plots to die for, either because of their simplicity or just how strange they are. Yes, master. I will defeat Sonic. What in the fuck? Especially in the case of Rivals, where the name of the game is Yu-Gi-Oh! Camera Monsters, and everyone just squares up for the most arbitrary of reasons. And once again, I don't know how to judge this villain. I guess you can say he is a bit more sinister than regular Eggman, as he has betrayed him, which is something that not even Eggman tried to do. 
But that's just about as much as I can say. He's just Eggman with a <laughs> at the end of it. It's 10 points to that, honestly. Eggman ne- Eggman ne- Eggman ne- <laughs> I'll slap him with a B rank. He's Eggman, on whom I would give an S rank to, but because his backstory is either A, B, or C, take your best guess, the plot of his games aren't necessarily the best due to their spin off nature, and he's got an annoying ass laugh straight out of a One Piece antagonist, he's getting that B rank instead. The Solaris Project. It was an ambitious project, named after their eternal sun god. But a major accident occurred ten years ago, and no one's lived there since. Iblis, this time I'll finish you. I'll change the past and save the world! Accident? The Solaris Project. Miss Elise! I cannot allow harm to come to my people. I always keep my word. Just call me... The Iblis Trigger. Who is the Iblis Trigger? Why does he want to destroy the world? You have this person to blame. If we don't take this chance, the future will remain exactly as it is. Who are you? What? Did you forget me? I'm your shadow. No. Something's different. I can feel a large, powerful consciousness coming from Solaris. For the future of the world, I will destroy you! Mephilus isn't trying to help you create a better future. He's trying to eliminate the past. You're already too late. What you gave to me, I now return to you. A one-way ticket to oblivion. Iblis! <laughs> Next, we have probably the biggest one of them all. The dark half of Solaris, the malevolent manipulator of chaos and destruction, whose name derives from the little devil, Veta. The world's most powerful robot is no more a challenge than. <laughs> Filthy little sewer rat. I will teach you to- Impossible. Your abilities exceed your previous data. Everybody give it up for... Phyllis the Dark. 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 Phyllis. 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 Phyllis the Dark. See this infinite? Yeah. Yeah. This is what you should have been. Anywho, you want the short answer? S rank. You want the long answer? Also S rank. I know, I know. But Sonic 06, bad, bad, kiss, kiss, broken, broken. Shut up, okay? Shut up. You're just a nuisance. It's bad enough that every video game news publisher can't talk about Sonic for literally 20 seconds without mentioning this game even after 16 years. But we're not talking about those things. We're talking about this thing. This beautiful, perfect villain. <laughs> Oh, Mephilus. Oh, yes. <laughs> What's gonna continue on with the video? And you're gonna pretend you didn't see that sh Usually, I wouldn't like villains like this. He's very much a villain who is evil for the sake of just being evil. But if you're gonna go that route, at least own that sh And present it with style and finesse. And Mephilus accomplishes that. Once again, Eggman does not run the show, but he has been running. I mean, you're looking a lot slimmer, my guy. Keep up the good work. Maybe we can start calling you Mr. Avocado and Okay, never mind. You know what? I do want fries with my fries. Mephilus, outside of his motivations, carries many of the traits that I love the most in a villain. Cold, calculated, always keeps his tempers as cool, even in situations where the cards are stacked against him. And if you want your villain to give you the heebie-jeebies, heebie-jeebies, what am I, 60? Look no further than his introductionary cutscene. Who are you? And how do you know my name? 
I am Mephilus. Mephilus the Dark. What? Did you forget me? I owe much to you, Shadow. And tell me that's not an effective way to drive the message of, oh, oh, this is a villain villain. And the voice performance and delivery, which, mind you, is not something I mentioned with the other villains, but I'm mentioning it here, so you know it's damn good. A search for the guilty. Who did this, you may ask? Humanity wasn't just jealous of your power. They feared it. Yes! Every word that comes out of this dude's mouth just screams sinister. He's powerful, manipulative, causing silver while albeit naive for trusting a stranger so quickly. You can't really blame him either when he's been fighting for a solution for so long and someone offers him a potential way of finally fixing his future. I mean, wouldn't you want to try that sh to if you were in Silver's situation, to fight and kill Sonic, to have Shadow, however briefly, doubt his own friends and allies when he reveals that Omega would betray him. Yes, he technically can solve his entire goal of wanting the Iblis trigger to happen himself, but the reason as to why he doesn't is because he loves to watch others tear each other apart, to create this array to see others suffer. While that might seem as lazy writing to most, think about what this father of the year and shadow did to him at his conception. He was ripped apart from his other half and sealed for many years after literally just being born. Can you blame him for being the way that he is because of all of this? He doesn't need a deep long charted reasons for his actions when he is supposed to be an entity of malice in the first place. I mean his name is synonymous with the f***ing devil. Uh, I suppose you would think so. <laughs> And when that doesn't work, he kills Sonic with ease because he always could have. It just wasn't the most fun and torturous way to do so. Unleashes Iblis and ends the world. Also, pause on the fact, he kills Sonic. I'll bet your sweet Pippi I did. What villain has done that? Eggman hasn't done that in over 30 years and Mans does it in his first and only game and he wasn't even planning to do so himself. Sonic! <laughs> Sonic! <laughs> Sonic! <laughs> Sonic! <laughs> no! Don't cry, no matter what. My disappointment is immeasurable. And my day is ruined. <laughs> <laughs> you can hate him all you want, but at the end of the day, there is no villain quite like Mephilus. And even now, there is still a lot of fan demand to bring this character back in some shape or form of light. Will Sega see that not everything from Sonic 06 was complete ass, and what they had was arguably the best Sonic villain ever besides Eggman? Probably not. But I'm going to give him the respect he deserves by awarding him that S rank. Hell, that SSS rank. Now it's time for the final curtain call. Will the next villain be able to somehow top this? Well, let's see, as next up we have. If you do not cast this E rank! As for Melina, I don't really count her as a villain. Yes, you fight her, but she's not necessarily a villain. As while her actions were a bit drastic, her intentions were entirely rooted in good, of not wanting to see her world and all she knows fall to ruin and death. Hell, most of the websites don't even list her alignment as evil. 
Plus, he serves as your companion for most of the game. Henceforth, she's not a villain. But at least enough so to where she should be judged alongside the actual villain villains. But if I were to give her a ranking, I'd award her with a nice solid A rank. Sonic and the Black Knight had some really good writing and I wish I saved it more growing up because it would be the last time we would get that for quite some years. I'm an optimist, but I'm also a realist. You're that Sonic from another dimension, aren't you? Sonic, help me! Once again, please be good, please be good, please... Hey, Blue Stride here, post Sonic Frontiers release. Yeah, no, it's good. Yeah, no, it's damn good. And really goes into the similarities I was making between Dragon Ball and Sonic the Hedgehog. In other words... Still couldn't get a green score on Metacritic like they wanted to though. But hey, yeah, can't win them all, Sega. What? Impossible! Sonic! Stubborn little pincushion! Give up and die already! <laughs> Out of my sight! <laughs> Status critical! <laughs> no! Retreat! <laughs> I feel like we've been here before. Have we been here before? <laughs> My god, this is happening again. Alright, Dark Gaia. We have another bio lizard situation here. Well, at least this guy doesn't come out of nowhere, so already a higher ranking of that. And in terms of scale, well, in literal terms, it's the biggest by a long shot. And he has a very unsettling design. Yet, it's hard to feel the weight of said scales when the earth is made into a jigsaw puzzle to birth this world ending entity and yet most of the people on the surface are like I'm Yes, this is so down. much Yahoo! fun! I love it! I swear the guards of Soliana cared more about their princess being kidnapped than these guys do of the impending doomsday. The whole world can come tumbling down but they'll still light up for a taste. <laughs> It's almost as if we're not supposed to take Dark Gaia seriously until the very end when he strips us of all our werehog powers and we have this epic supersonic and chip fight, then we take him seriously. A bit of tonal inconsistencies with this villain in game here, but whatever. Come on, babe, let's dance the night away! But because of how formidable of an opponent in terms of scale and design he is, and that he creates the Werehog, which is a good thing, goddammit! While a very flat and simple villain, it's a B-rank kind of simple. You passed, Dark Gaia. Actually, he forever took Chip away from us, so C-rank. It's actually B-rank, but this, this right here, this is a very personal C-rank. Sonic, I will never, ever forget you. Thank you, Sonic. Goodbye, friend. <sighs> Know your place, trash. Alrighty then. Next up is the villains of the meta. <laughs> and that about covers it for this video. Thank you so much for watching because just. Let me know what you guys think about these Sonic villains that I have covered and the ones I refuse to cover <laughs> in the comments below. Also, what is your favorite Sonic villain of the modern Sonic age? I better not see anyone unironically put Erasure Jin as their personal favorite, because we need to have a talk if you do. I would love to hear it all, and as always, I have been Blue Stride, thank you so much for watching, make sure to hit that subscribe button and become a fellow Strider if you haven't already done so, and you enjoyed or do enjoy what I produce, and hopefully, I will see you at another time in another video, but in all the meanwhile, don't let your stride die. Bye bye Well, 
It looks like that blue stride and it might have actually been right. You must be the one I've been hearing about. So, you fancy yourself a god of destruction as well. Interesting. Well, you do certainly look the part. Hold it right there! Excuse me. I have unfinished business with that traitorous beast. Oh? And who are you supposed to be exactly? I'm the great Dr. Eggman. I'm the greatest evil scientific genius there is. A man of science, you say? How adorable. Now, get out of my way, unless you'd rather be cannon fodder to the might of the egg carrier. Ah, about that. I'm in the bad neck. Oh, is he that bad? There's no way he's that bad. Now, back to our conversation that was so rudely interrupted. How about I propose a potential team-up? What now? What? Hey! You dare strike me? If that's how things are, then so be. You give me no other option. Allow me to bestow upon you what real power looks like. None of your precious emeralds needed for this one. This is fair work. All right, I finally made it. Time to finish this chaos. Ah, what's that? What? I'm taking that this chaos was not to your liking, Lord. What can I say? I was always more of a Metal Sonic fan myself. So. Off to the next one then. I believe they called him Ganon, the King of Darkness. King of Darkness? Talk about an over-the-top title! My thoughts exactly, Lord Beerus. With a name like that, he must be compensating for something. Well, there is this rather dashingly fellow. 